All right. I am not the most fastidious person. I like improvising with artwork a lot, and animation doesn't allow for that very much. So where you get to improvise is in the, the gutter between your keyframes. <laughs> you can decide how much time do you want to spend bringing that book down? How much time do you want to spend having it glow? How much time does it take for it to, to fade? And you can do kind of weird things with the shapes and the effects and the colors, right? But the keyframes keep you to your main story. They are the basic shapes of your narrative. So in order to build my assets, I also need to simplify them to my basic components. So my book, my book will always be open. And then things will just simply get added to the book. The smoke, the fire, right? So just by organizing the, uh, the emoji files that I already had into these clear layers, I have a lot of components that almost tell a story on their own, right? So this could be frame one, this is frame two, this is frame three, this is frame four, this is frame five, this is frame six, you know, that kind of thing. But it doesn't have any of that movement on it. So it's just adding components. So that is then what I do with the animated assets. So the animated assets, for instance, the book, I need to make duplicates of it. This is where I want it to end and then maybe have a shadow underneath it. But instead of moving the book with my move tool, I make a duplicate of it, command J, and then I move that duplicate and I move it up a little bit. And then command J and I move it up a little bit more. Oops. And I'm trying to hold down shift so that it keeps its axis so it doesn't travel. Hold down J, duplicate it, click it, hold down shift, and you see I'm going to make it go a little bit faster each time. It's like an accordion. So I'm revealing a little bit more of the book with each movement. Not that this will ever be seen, but this is showing you the full movement cycle of that book coming down. And that will show me how many panels it takes just between this panel and this panel, right? Because just that arrow means I need to show that that book doesn't just pop into place, but is actually moving into place. And the creative ability I have is to decide how many, how many times does it move. I get to control the, the experience of time. That's why it's called time-based media. Oh. That's bizarre. Oh, I know why. There we go. All right. So, how do I test this? Well, in my assets, in PhotoP, I'm still on just my, my playground file, my assets. I can just click on these eyeballs, right? And see it. So it's going to start here, then it's going to be here, then it's going to go to here, then it's going to go here, then it's going to go here, and it's going to slow down as it like gently rests on the head. Because I don't want it to feel like it's an attack on the head. All right, so now I've got all my book movements. I'm going to put those into a folder, select them all, put them into a folder, and label it book. Now there's one of these layers that's going to stay a lot longer than the others. That's because the book only moves in this frame and then it stays put almost all the way to the end until it just gets burned up. So I'm going to label this my book and I just call it my hero. A hero asset is the one you always return to to make variations on. 
And that's because if you do warps or if you do transforming, you're losing like pixel quality every time on something rasterized. And so you want to always be able to go back to that clean asset to make variations if you need to rebuild something. So I'm going to close that. Good, my book's done. What about the expressions on the face? Same thing. I need to decide, do I actually want to use these external assets that I've built or that I found, or do I just want to be inspired by them? And I think I just want to be inspired by them. But you could composite them in as well. So I want just a neutral expression. I already have a sad expression. I have my sad eyes and my sad mouth. But let's turn those sad eyes into happy eyes just by duplicating them. Whoops. And then Option Command T. Let's close some of these. Option Command T to transform it. And then I'm just going to flip them vertically, right? And then just move them up. Now I have creepy eyes, but on one layer is happy eyes, on one layer is sad eyes. So I'm going to call these happy eyes. And all these eyes are going to go into a folder eventually, nice and organized, right? And then what about happy mouth? Same thing, duplicate it. Emojis are not complicated. Option Command T, flip it vertically. Maybe move it up a little bit. So you have the same kind of center. And I have happy mouth. Now, happy also has the glowing cheeks, right? And I can decide what opacity I want those cheeks. So maybe for happy cheeks, I want them at 80% opacity. So then, instead of grouping all the eyes together, all the mouths together, all the, the cheek flushes together. I'm going to put all of the happies into one folder. That's happy. So that means I can just turn it on and off, that expression. Then I'm going to do the same thing with sad, but I'm also going to make a duplicate of the happy cheeks. And then just dim it down to the lowest amount I ever want it to be, which is probably about 20%. And that's going to be my sad cheeks, right? So I got sad eyes, sad mouth, sad cheeks. Either with a shadow or not. So then I'm going to move all the sad things together. And put them into a folder. I'm just going to call that sad. So again, it's all about being organized because those folders can be turned on or off. And God, that's freakish. We turn sad and happy on at the same time. It does not compute. All right. So I've got happy, I've got sad. What else do I need? Those ones are the most basic. I have sad here. I have happy here. Here, I just have the weird kind of medium expression. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take a duplicate of my sad, and I'm going to command J the entire folder. And I'm going to rename it to meh. So now I need to change these eyes to meh eyes. Right? And I'm going to do that by transforming. Option command T. And this time, I'm just going to warp them together. And I'm not going to worry about them being perfectly symmetrical anymore. Or I might just create new assets entirely, because this might be more trouble than it's worth, right? Same thing with the mouth. Option Command T. I'm 
I'm going to distort it and just change that expression a little bit. So now I have meh, meh eyes. And then the cheeks, the cheeks should be a little bit more opaque. Maybe at 50% for meh. And I'm not in love with those eyes, so let's just make a new layer. And then I'm going to just go ahead and make some shapes. Why not? Just like exercise two. I can be inspired by these. Use transform, tilt them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I think I still like this better. All right, so I've got my meh expressions. I've got my happy expressions. I've got my sad expressions. I need more assets still, though. So I have, this really isn't meh so much as it's, yeah, no, it's, it's meh. So I'll start this way. And now I have the components for my first frame. So what do I do? I set it to my very first frame, which doesn't even have a book in it, right? And if I'm not happy with that expression for my first frame, maybe I make a duplicate of it, right? And I call this meh1, and then this will be meh2. And on MET1, I'm just going to tweak it a little bit. And you know what I haven't done that I really need to do is I need to save this with a different name. So save as PSD. And now what this is called, so I don't want to overwrite my exercise two. This is assignment three assets file. Let's do it to the desktop for right now. And there it is. So I want more basic eyes for, for meh1. So let's see, what if I just flip these? Yeah, not too bad. And then the mouth. What if I just distort it a little bit more on the other side? Okay, and then with the eyes, maybe I just transform them just a little bit taller, holding down shift. Good, and then what if I warp them just a little bit? Just tuck those corners in so they're not so drawn. Good. So that's a good kind of neutral expression to start with. So I think I've got my first frame. You guys agree? Or does this look too, it still looks a little too pained. This is tricky. And every time I warp these eyes, they're going to get a little softer. So you know what I can do instead is I can simply take zero feather on my lasso and I can simply draw an eye shape. You're allowed to just make your own pixels for this. And then I can paint that in with my paint bucket, hold down option, steal the color of the, the one eye and just paint it in. And then I can duplicate that, Command J, I can transform it, flip it horizontally, all these compositing skills, and then move it over. Oops, I'm still on the paint bucket. Move tool. Be on that side. And maybe I like that.